The new M1 MacBooks are always described in superlatives. It's easy to see why. The generational jump from Intel processors is so huge that many, perhaps unfairly, have decided to replace bigger and much more powerful Mac computers with these small and lightweight laptops. One of the main users said that have been intrigued and impressed by the performance of these M1 MacBook Airs and Pros are video editors, especially those using Final Cut Pro. I acknowledge that a lot of professional users of these machines will not be editing video, but running other programs specific to their needs. But video editing tasks the system resources in more ways than one, and is therefore a good yardstick by which to measure overall system performance. Now I have looked at Final Cut Pro performance in several of my previous M1 videos, and I wasn't totally impressed. The lack of RAM on the 8GB variant reared its ugly head in one of the videos and there were other issues relating to software niggles in the other. However, I wanted to try out video editing in Final Cut Pro and one other program, DaVinci Resolve, to see how it performs when doing nothing else but video editing. Can it hold a candle to larger MacBooks? Will it be free of issues if the only program running is the video editing suite? And what if I don't connect it to a 4K display? What if I just edit on the small 13.3 inch screen? Will that improve performance in leaps and bounds? Let's find out. Well, let's start with the good news. Performance with every successive FCP update is getting better. Earlier, Final Cut Pro 10.5 was susceptible to audio loss issues when adding transitions or even trimming clips, but this is better in version 10.5.1. It still happens, but less frequently, and instead of having to close the whole app and restarting it, you can wait and let the system catch up, usually in a few seconds, and the audio comes back. Watch for yourself here. So the obvious disadvantage is the size increase of the watch with this bumper. So now we've seen temporarily lost audio at this point, but if we allow the little bar here, if we allow the rendering to happen in the background, it should come back. Previously, this problem, when it occurred, you had to restart the whole program to get back the audio, but that is no longer the case. In everyday life. So you can see that the audio has returned. So we've lost audio there momentarily, and you can see the progress bar, and it comes back, and it comes back, and there you go. That's how long it takes for the audio to be restored. Like so. Now I'm editing with 4K 30fps video. There are no LUTs applied and no color correction done. We won't even stack multiple timelines just for the purpose of this video. So we can delete that bit. Video life. The obvious, so the obvious dis So trim a little bit. So Final Cut Pro at this stage is performing really well. It doesn't appear to be stuttering at all and it hasn't lost audio as well. So let's see what's happening here. If it's doing, it's all idle, it's not transcoding at the moment. So no problem so far. As you can see, with no background apps hogging the memory, the performance is excellent. Scrubbing through footage is fast and seamless and adding stabilization to clips is very quick. In fact, in this area, it easily trumps Intel processors. Overall, Final Cut Pro and the M1 were a match made in heaven. It's just that they were having to travel through hell to get there. Jokes aside, performance is now very acceptable, especially with no other resource-hungry apps running in the background. Occasionally, the MacBook Air will drop some video frames, but this only happens the first time you apply the transition. Once the background render completes, again usually in 2-3 to three seconds, the next playback is smooth and stutter free. So these are the kind of problems that were present in Final Cut Pro 10.5, they are much improved with 10.5.1. But just to show that these machines are not infallible, they are super fast in terms of CPUs but they do not have a dedicated graphics card and because of that it can take a couple of seconds sometimes three or four seconds for the program to catch up with whatever 
changes you're making. So we're not even stacking timelines here. So there is just one timeline. We've added one single effect it here, can be visible on the edges which is playing here. perfectly now, but it skipped frames when we added it and it needed three or four seconds for it to catch up. This is in no way meant to denounce the M1 MacBook Air, but just to show where it actually stands in the Mac pecking order. So it's not infallible as has been portrayed by some media sources. So instead of that, it is quite fast and for such a portable, thin, lightweight machine, it is excellent. But at the same time, if you're trying to replace a bigger MacBook Pro or perhaps a desktop Mac that has a dedicated graphics card, well, do not be surprised if this trails it in performance in terms of video editing. In DaVinci Resolve, another app that is now optimized for Apple Silicon, the performance is surprisingly good. So you can see the typical load times for DaVinci Resolve. I've clicked that on the desktop and you can see that it's bouncing away and it's loading up. And this is the M1 Mac optimized version of DaVinci Resolve. So you can very well use it even on the 8 GB variant. So we'll open the untitled project here and let's try and import that same media into this project. So I've got the media saved on the T5 drive itself, just to make things easier. And we will drag that here. So let's try actually scrubbing through the timeline to see the performance. So it's pretty smooth. There are no problems with the timeline itself. Let's try trimming it. No, no, no. Now when it comes time to protecting your Apple Watch, you have a number of options. You can go for one of those ugly cases that make the watch look really, really bulky. Or you can go for one of these. This is a small rubber bumper by Ojos. So no problem so far. Only when adding transitions can I see cracks in the performance. Let's try and add an effect or a transition now. So let's try additive dissolve here. Let's see how that plays back. Basically put and that will that was all good what about blur dissolve will basically it will basically put and that will basically protect so there were some skip frames similar to final cut pro there but let's just give it a second to render in the background and let's try and play that again basically put and that will basic much better. basically put and that will basic basically put and that will basically put so no problems there similar to final cut pro the performance seems to be quite similar to final cut pro there is some stuttering and rough playback once the background render process completes there are no issues it does a good job too because this is usually and that will basically protect the watch from minor dings and scratches and it does a good job too because this is usually the area the around the edges which is most so overall performance in DaVinci Resolve is similar to Final Cut Pro and that's a very good thing and the best part is that Final Cut Pro loses audio still sometimes whilst the render needs to catch up but DaVinci Resolve apparently does not DaVinci Resolve is slower to export the final video files as compared to FCP, which is as expected. Overall, these M1 MacBooks are real options now when it comes to video editing, at least for 4K video. There seems to be very little cause for complaint here, and certainly the performance is leaps and bounds ahead of anything with an integrated GPU from the past. Hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please consider subscribing to this channel. There's plenty of M1 coverage to be found on the channel and the easiest way to watch it all is to view the M1 playlist linked in the description below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next one.